Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I just love making toaster covers and these are my favorite kind, the kind of that have the country look. When you do a lot of country sewing, a uh, little check fabric is very, very popular. So that's why I used it in this. This one has a little flower theme. I put piping on this one. On this one I didn't because I wanted to show you the difference. So if you want to have piping on your toaster cover, there's another toaster cover that I'm going to refer you to. There's a link to it below your YouTube screen on how to put the piping on. I also did a little flower applique with leaves and on this one I did a little strawberry applique because on the gusset here and down on the bottom there's little flowers all over it so I tried to stick to that theme. On the gusset up here are strawberries so that's why I made a strawberry. I have all of the cutting instructions listed below your YouTube screen in the description section. You scroll down, you click on show more or the down arrow and it will expand open. In that list of links that I have, I will have one that's for another toaster cover. In that toaster cover tutorial, it will show you in detail how to measure your toaster because not all toasters are exactly the same size. So my measurements for my fabrics that I cut may not fit your toaster. So, so make sure you measure your toaster, you add a little bit more to the pieces to make sure they're going to fit. Okay, let's get started. Take your two pieces for the front section and bring them together and you're going to line the edges up and then pin and stitch one quarter inch seam. Now then you need to press the seam on the back side. Then you're going to unfold. You're going to press on top but first look at your fabric and always press this seam towards the darker fabric. So as you're pressing on top you're making sure that that seam is going towards your darkest fabric. I'm using fusible fleece on the back side of my fabrics and fusible fleece has a real rough edge on one side and really smooth on the other. You take the rough edge and you put it on the back side of your fabric, the not so pretty side. So for your toaster cover front and back, you cut pieces out that are that size and fuse it on. Just follow package instructions on the process of doing that. On your back section and your front section, you're going to round the top two corners. So take something round, it could be a lid to a jar, just anything that you have, place it up there and then draw around it. And you, again, you do this in the top two corners and then go ahead and just trim that off. I put an applique on mine. This is the applique pattern. Now you can choose any applique pattern that you like because some of my fabric that I'm using on this toaster cover has strawberries what I did was just look at the strawberries on the fabric and drew a shape that was similar to that. So I drew it onto just plain paper. I used pencil and I kind of erased and redrew here and there till I got it to the right shape. Then I took this and traced it onto fusible webbing and I use Pellon Easy Steam 2 Fusible Web. You can get it at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. You can also get it on Amazon. So you would go ahead and draw it onto that. I'm going to refer you to a, a coffee cup applique tutorial that takes you through the whole process from beginning to end on how to do a simple applique design. So that coffee cup tutorial is listed below your YouTube screen in the description section and you will find all kinds of links down there which I will discuss later. 
after you fused your applique uh, design onto it, then you want to just do a simple little satin stitch. If you don't have a satin stitch on your machine, just tighten up your zigzag stitch so that it's not real long and maybe widen it slightly. Always test your applique stitches out on scrap fabric first till you get it to the way you want. So you do it on the raw edge. Also, I did it on the raw edge here. This is my gusset. This is the piece that goes from the side up over the top and down the other side of your toaster. And you can see the little uh, strawberry design. My strawberry looks very, very similar to it. And because it's got little uh, white spots in here, choosing the red and white polka dot fabric was actually a perfect choice. When you're cutting your gusset out, just to make sure that the gusset will fit properly, what I usually do is I'll add just a little bit more length to it, just in case I come up just a little short because you don't want that to happen. So maybe add an extra inch just to make sure you have enough. You can always trim it off later if you have too much. So after you've cut your gusset fabric out, make sure you put your fusible fleece on the back side of your fabric. Take your gusset, fold it in half, and then on one edge here, go ahead and put a pin to mark the center. Then you wanna do the same thing on the toaster cover front, fold it in half, and place a pin to mark the center. Match the two pins and place them together. Then go ahead and pin across your um, top of the toaster cover. Do not pin around the curved edge just yet. Pin the gusset to each side. Then go ahead and pin the curved corner. After you have it all pinned together on all the sides, then go ahead and stitch a one quarter inch seam all the way around. After you've got that one edge stitched on, then go ahead and stitch on the piece for the back so that the corners will lay nicer when you turn it front side out. It's a good idea to do little clips around those curved edges. Make sure you don't cut through your stitch line. Now turn it front side out. So at this stage, this is what mine looks like from the front to the side, back, and around to the other side. Now stitch your three pieces for the lining together in the same manner so when you're done it looks like this. Insert the lining inside and then match up all your seams. Then you want to go ahead and pin the bottom edge together. When you're uh, matching your side seams, I recommend you have one seam going in one direction and the other seam going in the opposite direction. That way it's not too bulky. After you've got everything pinned and matched up, then I recommend you do a basting stitch close to the edge all the way around. Take your fabric that's gonna bind the raw edges at the bottom. And I always cut mine just a little bit longer than I need, just in case I've measured incorrectly, because you can always cut the excess off. Uh, go ahead and fold the strip in half and press it all the way down. Here is the back side of my toaster cover. And right on the inside here, on the lining side, is where you're going to be begin pinning your a binding strip down. So I've started in the middle there, pin it all the way around, and when you get to where the ends are going to meet, because I've cut mine a little longer, you don't have to cut it quite this much longer, but I'm gonna overlap it, and you can see where it's overlapping. And I'm going to cut it off just slightly more than 
about a quarter of an inch, just a little more than that, overlap, maybe three eighths of an inch, and cut it off. Then I'm gonna just remove a few of these pins. I'm gonna open up my ends, flatten it out like this, do the same thing with this other one, fold the toaster cover in because it's gonna be easier to pin, then pin the ends together, and then stitch a quarter of an inch seam, and then finger press that seam open. After you've finger pressed it open, fold it in half, pin it along the edge there, and then go ahead and stitch a quarter of an inch seam all the way around. Now turn it to where you have the lining side out, then fold this binding over like this, and you're going to press it at your ironing board. So take your toaster cover and just slip it over the skinny little part of your ironing board and press this all the way around. Now turn it with the front side out, take that binding strip and fold it over the edge and press it all around. Then you're gonna stitch it close to the edge all along here, all the way around. And I find it easy when you're stitching this down to actually have the lining side out. It's just gonna be easier to control the toaster cover as you're stitching around. So here it is from the front when it's all done. And then here's the side. Hope you can see this. And then the back. And then the other side. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you actually try making one of these toaster covers. Now remember, if you're a beginner, you don't need to do all of this extra stuff. You can make the front and the back and the gusset all the same fabric and leave off the piping and the applique projects because toaster covers are really quite simple to put together. So for those of you who have more experience, I would go for the one with all the goodies on it. It's gonna really turn out cute. So no matter which version you select, it's gonna look really nice. Now don't forget about all those links down below your YouTube screen in the description section. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.